Hi, this is Sean, the Mindful Farmer. I'm going to be talking about supporting your flowers or trellising in the cut flower garden. Uh, when, I'm, when we're doing cut flowers, especially if you're selling them, it's really important to get really straight, long stems so that the florist has something to work with or if you're building the bouquets yourself so that you have enough uh, stem to be able to arrange the flowers. So trellising is one of the main uh, ways that we can accomplish that. Also selecting the right varieties. Not every variety makes a great cut flower. Um, even of the same, you know, you can have the same uh, species or subspecies and still certain varieties are gonna make longer stems than others. So when I'm trying to figure out how I wanna go about trellising, and you can see some examples behind me, um, you know, it's really important to think about how that plant grows first off. Uh, and generally there's four different categories that I put plants into in terms of their growth and then that'll help me select what sort of trellising uh, each plant needs. Uh, the four categories that I put plants into are basal, lateral, apical, and climbing. Uh, basal, number one, means it grows from the base of the plant, so think of lettuce. Uh, lateral means that it, it grows upwards but then branches out, so think of like a tomato plant. I know I'm describing all vegetables, but... <laughs> uh, Apical would be, it just grows straight up and think of like corn or like sunflowers in particular. And then uh, it, it's growing from the, the apex to the top of that plant, just up. And then climbing would be something like sweet peas um, or a few other uh, types of flowers. There's not a lot of climbing flowers in cut flowers, um, but I'll show you an example of what I do for my sweet peas. So the first one I want to get into, um, you know, a, a lot of our basal plants uh, may not need support at all. So like the violets over here, uh, they don't really need support. We're getting like 12 inch stems on some of the violets. Um, we've cut them back and now they're kind of getting a, a, a rebloom now. Um, a, this status is an example of a basal type plant. So basal growing from the base and it gets really long stems. So while the leaves all stay at the ground, the stems shoot up. I mean, some of these are almost at least two feet tall. Um, you know, so because the plant itself is so low, it's anchored to the ground really well, uh, and doesn't need a lot of, um, netting. Um, so I am using a type of system on the status that's really just using a little bit of jute twine to just to keep them from falling over this way or that. So if a, if a plant's basal, it'll either get, um, typically, um, our X pattern with the jute and using the electrical conduit um, to tie the jute off, or it won't have any trellising at all. So I went around the perimeter of that bed with the jute string and just kind of corralled all the flowers out of the walk path. Then I went in a zigzag pattern from electrical conduit to electrical conduit to make an X. Uh, the next category is lateral. And so that might be, that's an example of our straw flowers here. And I'll show that up a little bit closer too. Uh, the straw flowers grow up upwards, but then along that stem, they start branching out. Uh, zinnias would be the same. And what I found is things that, that, uh, that have lateral growth that are growing up and out and kind of bushy, they really benefit from this horticultural netting. And so you can see this, these straw flowers actually have two layers because these flowers are about four feet tall right now. So having two layers of netting on the, on things that are going to get real tall, like this, flowers is really important uh, the sunflowers um, you know because basically this top layer is supporting uh, the stem that I'm cutting for the cut flower but the bottom layer is still supporting the other lateral branches that are branching out and sending up more flowers um, snap dragon dragons might be another example of that You're, you'll get some lateral branching uh, zinnias um, celosia would all fall into that category and really that's where most of our cut flowers are probably gonna land is something that would benefit from some horticultural netting and that has that lateral branching. The next example is our apical growth. So that's primarily sunflowers and then maybe something like foxglove or lupine um, that's really just gonna go, grow straight up and you get these really large, big blooms. And those, what I found, they, they benefit if you are in an area that might be a little windy or maybe they're kind of unto themselves, like in this little block, um, they can uh, fall over pretty easy. 
you know, if you're growing really giant sunflowers, like the mammoth type sunflowers, you may need a little bit of support. Even, you know, uh, something like, uh, you know, a piece of bamboo or something to, to tie it off if you're not getting really deep roots. Um, but what I found with the apical type growth pattern uh, for, for uh, plants, especially things like sunflowers, is really they can help support each other. So putting them in rows that are fairly tight, uh, if they get a big wind, they kind of bump into each other and help from falling over. Uh, or if you have something like a wind break, like a fence, you could plant them up against the south side of a fence and that'll really help. Um, so it's not necessarily netting, it's not really, um, uh, you know, using twine and, and things like that to support them or tomato cages. They don't need that level of support, uh, but they just need the support of each other. And so an example of the climbing is our sweet peas. Uh, so I'm gonna take you over there and check those out real quick. So these sweet peas were planted a bit later um, than uh, the ones that I planted out at, at Heifer Ranch. And those are actually flowering now. So here's an example of our sweet peas. They're climbing. I just took a cattle panel and bent it to make an arch. There's Rowan. They're actually your sweet peas. Yeah, so I'll put a little video eventually about how I made this arch. Uh, but I'm excited even if we don't cut any sweet peas to sell, they'll still just smell really nice in this little arch. They may need a little bit of encouragement to climb upwards, um, but then once they, they get it, they'll start climbing. Probably once they get about as tall as Rowan, about, about that tall, that, that's when they'll usually start to flower. And then you should get about uh, 12 inch stems on those. Here's our yet unfinished greenhouse. All these plants are gonna need some support for sure. Uh, they'll probably all get horticultural netting because they have that lateral growth. So that's Gumfrina, Cosmos, uh, Basil, uh, Celosia, Carnations, and Asters. And you know they'll continue to flower and branch out. And so I want them to have them for a really long season so it's worth investing the time and the money in the horticultural netting uh, to give them really good support throughout the season. You know, so we've talked about the different kinds of trellising, uh, basal growing from the base, lateral uh, growing outward from stems like the sta uh, uh, straw flowers here, apical growing straight up like our sunflowers, and then climbing like our uh, sweet peas. So uh, one of the things I really like about the uh, straw flowers um, using the horticultural netting is that I can also kind of use it like a table. I can set my flowers on it while I'm cutting them. Um, I've set the height of it uh, to about waist height, which is about where my flowers start to branch out. Uh, and I can, you know, cut them easily, strip the stems, either drop them in the path or toss them in the compost if they got some aphids on them or something, uh, and just lay them until I have my stack of 15. Once I have the stack of 15, um, I put my uh, bl black rubber band around it and then put that in the bucket. I put five bundles in a bucket and then it's off to the wholesale market. You know, these, this horticultural netting is recyclable, it's UV treated, it'll last year after year. So I do uh, take this up at the end of the season and, and store it and then just reuse it. All my beds are standardized, so that means they're all the same uh, distance and width. So even the straw flowers, you know, they'll be in that next block next year. And I just take the same, you know, I can take any piece of, of netting and put it on the same block, you know, same size block and plant my straw flowers. Um, I don't have different sizes of things. You know, it, and it's, you know, it should be noted too that like these, uh, these are electrical conduit. They're not holding up the weight of the plants. They're just keeping them from moving side to side. So see, I can, I can move them side to side. They're not, they're not keeping them from falling down. They're just supporting them side to side. Um, so they're not the, it's not tied off to the conduit. It's just, it's just up against it is all. In the status, I just chose to use the jute string and kind of corralled them, my little jute corral. 
And the reason why I like that is because, you know, you really want your support system for your flowers to work for you. The, if I were to use the netting on the status, the status branches kind of low, you know, because it's growing from the base of the plant. So if I use that netting and it's here, when I pull that up, it's going to affect the flowers. Uh, they'll get caught in the netting. So I like using the jute because it gives enough support, but it still allows a really open area because usually with status, I'm cutting several uh, stems at the same time. And I can pull, I just cut five stems really quickly and I can pull them all out really fast and add them to my bundle. Um, so yeah, once again, <laughs> you know, an advantage to having some, uh, a space to work with using this, this netting up over here. Um, so yeah, that's why I like the jute uh, string. Also, it's a renewable resource, and at the end of the season, I can just pull the jute out with the status and throw them in the compost pile. Um, you know, so we, we talk, I, I like to talk about thoughtful design, which is not only good systems like standardizing the distance of your bed, so you can use the same equipment on every bed, um, but also thinking about your materials. Uh, you know, I'm really not a fan of PVC in the garden. I think it has its place as a water line, um, but it's a pretty nasty uh, product to manufacture. It's a pretty dirty product and it's not recyclable. So I'm not a fan of using uh, PVC for plant supports or hoops or greenhouses. Um, I prefer to use metal uh, because it can be made out of recycled materials. It can be recycled. It'll last a lifetime. And it's really not even that much more. Um, so the electrical conduit I really like because I can just store it at the end of the season outside, just in the corner of my yard up against the fence and then redeploy it um, however I need. It's really easy to just push into the ground by hand um, and it's going to last for forever. And once, you know, let's say it does get bent, I can just have the whole thing recycled. Um, so another, uh, I guess, it, <laughs> thing that to keep in mind too is as you're cutting flowers, just to have a, a workspace that's easy to use. So I try and keep tables close by. I keep clean buckets on hand to where as we cut flowers, you can put them in the clean buckets uh, right away. Um, clean water is on site. And I try and keep my tools close by. Uh, so being able to have your tools on hand is really important. So at, the, so at the end of my beds, you know, just keep my tools on hand. I actually keep my snips inside the electrical conduit or my jute string. I'll just slide over the top. So just to recap, we have our basal plants, like the poppies, the violets, the status that grow from the base of that plant, then send, send flowers upwards. Uh, we're using the jute string on the status. I'm not really sure on the bread seed poppies what we'll wind up doing. Uh, I've never seen them grow before, so I'm gonna figure that one out. The violets don't need any support, they're, they're short enough. And then we have our lateral, so that would be the celosia, the zinnias, the straw flowers, they're growing up, but also sending out side shoots. And for that, we're using two layers of the horticultural netting. Um, Cosmo, <coughs> excuse me, Cosmos, you could probably just use one layer. Same thing with Gumfrina. Uh, and we're using support systems that work for us. So the jute helps us get to lots of stems that are close together. The straw flower or the horticultural netting helps us, gives us a table and helps us select uh, individual flowers and, and keeps them straight and tall. Um, the next one is the apical. So that's our sunflowers. They support each other. So getting them kind of a little tighter uh, to where they can kind of bounce off each other and support one another. Uh, if you only have a few, uh, you know, maybe you have four sunflowers in a little cluster, there's not a lot of stuff around it. You may need to kind of corral them. Maybe the jute string might work for those. Uh, and then finally we have the sweet peas. So our climbing uh, type plants. And I like the cattle panels, or you can also use the horticultural netting. And it comes in rolls up to eight feet wide. So if you're in a high tunnel, uh, you can just uh, use uh, zip ties and zip tie it to, the, to a purlin or a piece of electrical conduit running above at the top of the, the tunnel, and then be able to have just a wall of flowers. Uh, so I, I'll probably go out to Heifer Ranch and take a, a tour with the gardener out there and show you what that looks like once they're once they're full grown here in the next few weeks. Um, so as always, thank you for watching. Uh, I hope you're getting a lot out of this, learning how to support your flowers. 
Um, these principles apply both for the home gardener, if you're growing for fun or for your family. Um, before we were selling flowers, we were growing still quite a bit and just giving them away to people. Um, we'd take a, you know, bundles to our small group and then just be able to say like, hey, can y'all, you know, go find someone, go find a neighbor um, and give them some flowers. Uh, so, you know, it can just be something fun you do and just a way to share love to people in your community. Uh, and then, you know, but all these principles still apply if you're selling for market as well. Um, if, you, if you're trying to sell a lot of flowers, um, you know, being able to think of ways that you can move quickly and really efficiently um, is really important. Um, so design a good system. Um, yeah, thank you for watching. Uh, please like and subscribe. Uh, put any questions you have in the comments and I'll try and get to those as soon as I can. And thank you.